My name is Rika Ronhold. I'll be moderating this session. And this is to show you and tell you about this brand new initiative called the Global Goals World Cup. It stems out of Denmark, and, uh, and it was launched this Sunday as part of the SDG Week as the opening event of the Social Good Summit. And it is a women's soccer tournament for the Global Goals. Now, words can't really describe what this actually is. So I am going to show you a video from the pilot tournament that we had in Copenhagen this May. And after that, you are going to hear from Ms. Maiken Gilmartin, who is the founder of this project, from Mila Rosenthal, who is the director of communication from UNDP, who is partnering on this project, and from uh, Mr. Mons Lukatov, who is the PGA of the 70th General Assembly. So let's see this video and you'll get an idea of what this actually is. All right. Now, in the document that launched the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, sport was actually mentioned. And I am just going to read to you what 193 leaders of the world could agree to say about sport, and it's this. Sport is also an important enabler of sustainable development. We recognize the growing contribution of sport to the realization of development and peace and to its promotion of tolerance and respect and the contribution it makes to the empowerment of women and young people, individuals and communities, as well as to health, education and social inclusion objectives. Now, Maiken, when you read that, what did that, what does these words mean to you and how is creating the Global Goals World Cup your answer to the challenge to sport? Well, to back it a little bit, uh, when I first read that, I was like, what does that really mean? You know, you kind of, what, what are we, what is it that driver for change? Then we started asking around, we started asking Women Deliver, we asked Mons Lukatov, then we asked UNDP, we asked people that were kind of like, who should know about this? What, what, what was it really? And um, in that conversation, we suggested that we should actually also have been part of goal four. So it would be quality education, but also quality physical education. Um, but in a sense, I mean, in understanding the broader picture is that maybe we can actually do something for all the goals in, in other ways and not just one. Um, but I definitely knew that as a sports organizations and, and a, a pretty, uh, you know, playful sports organization, um, we uh, thought that what do we do ourselves? What can we really do? And since I do make soccer balls, um, we, uh, we asked if we could actually just make a soccer ball with all the sustainable goals on it, because when you look at it, I mean, the beautiful patterns works really well for a ball. And that was kind of our first kind of sense, or at least we can for sure have the ball communicate. And it really does communicate really, really well. Start one. <laughs> Excellent. Now, Mons Lugatov, you've been, you've been the president of General Assembly during this first year of the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. And I know I've heard you say that there's a huge pedagogical challenge that's put to you know, the UN in communicating these goals. What I also know is I've heard you sort of mumble when you stood there with this soccer ball that this is the first time that soccer actually made sense to you. <laughs> so. What I am going to ask you is, do you see, what do you see as the role of sport in actually making these goals understandable to the general public? Yeah, first of all, it is so important with all kind of good ideas and innovation of how to communicate these goals, because we will never be able to do it without the partnerships of governments, creating the framework, that makes it obvious for companies and consumers, families, individuals to do the right thing, uh, and the active partnerships of those individuals, families, uh, businesses. Uh, and we, we have got a very, very good toolbox here, realizing the interdependency of everything and the necessity to move forward on all the issues in order to reach any of them. That's good, and that's a uh, revolutionary agenda in a way, and a necessary revolutionary agenda. And it only became that 
revolutionary, that ambitious, because it was not only 193 governments. It was 8 million people around the world that actually took part in formulating the Sustainable Development Goals. And now we are there, we have the good text. And we are one year into the 15-year period we have set up uh, within which we would eradicate extreme poverty and combine it with uh, the uh, intensive fight against climate change and, and uh, environmental uh, catastrophes. And in this process of implementation, we need all good ideas how to get more people on board, understand. I think an optimistic view is that we have now maybe two, three, four percent of humanity aware of the agenda. And the governments will never get this work done without pressure from a much stronger public. And this initiative is also very visionary. When you see the pictures of, 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 of we have just seen, what, what you do here is you put focus, of course, on gender, women's rights, girls' rights, to be on equal terms with men. You put focus on the necessity of partnerships and cooperation across ethnic divides. Uh, you put focus, of course, also on health. And, and, and there could certainly be a number of other of, of, of the uh, of the 17 development goals that that is brought into the discussion to people not even knowing all of them. So, thank you, Mons. Yeah. Now, Mila, um, UNDP is the is the UN agency sort of generally in charge of implementing the goals and. Uh, this Sunday for the for the launch tournament, you actually set a team to play in the Global Goals World Cup. Now, tell me what that was like. I will actually just add that the captain of the team is here today. So, uh, <laughs> thank you for being here. <laughs> it was so exciting for us to have a team in the first um, uh, Global Goals World Cup to be held here in the United States, the inaugural. And you saw, some, you saw some of these pictures from it. I hope it captures the spirit of that event. It was wonderful. We, oh, I see that we have another team member who's joined us there in the back. Uh, we had women from across UNDP staff who, are, who were excited about being part of this. Um, the, the spirit at the event, and I hope the pictures are capturing it, is uh, the, all of the teams are supporting a different goal. So the entire cup supports the idea of the sustainable development goals, but engages young women to help push for specific goals. Uh, so our, our team at UNDP was wearing red t-shirts for the no poverty goal. And one of the things that we talk about at the United Nations Development Program is how the agenda is entirely integrated. We will only achieve any one of the goals if we achieve all of them together. And so I think that spirit came across really in an in a, in a, a incredibly exciting way in the, in the cup. Uh, we had our, our partners at Save the Children who were supporting number five, the goal on gender equality. Uh, I think that was hard for our celebrity refs because they were all wearing red t-shirts. Um, and we had uh, teams supporting other goals. The teams were chanting from the sidelines at halftime. We had a conga dance all the way around the gym. Uh, we did have the participation of UNDP's newest uh, celebrity advocate, our UNDP Goodwill Ambassador, Nikolai Costa-Waldo, who was very excited to have this as his official, uh, first official act in representing UNDP and advocating for the Sustainable Development Goals that he refereed this match. Um, we were hoping the fact that we had just appointed him as Goodwill Ambassador would help UNDP in winning the match. Uh, I'm sorry to say that he was an extremely fair and impartial referee. Uh, and um, one of the things I think that really captures the spirit of the match is that teams were judged not only on whether they scored goals, but on their inter artistic interpretation and on their team spirit and on how well they advocated for their goals. So uh, it, was a, um, it was a big party but it had a real serious underlying message, which was that it's, it's young women and it's the voices of all of us from around the world who are pushing for the implementation of the goals that will lead to, cha to real change and lasting change. Thank you. Now, see, 
I used to be an athlete. I was always told you shouldn't mix sports with politics. They don't go together. But Mike, why? Why are you mixing sport and politics and art and food and whatnot? <laughs> What's going on? Well, I mean, we're all saying that we all belong, right? So, I mean, we all belong in each other's world. They're not really that separated. And, and we work beautifully together. We may, may, maybe we don't grow up thinking it, you know, sometimes we think, shit, I'm a math girl or I'm the sports jerk or whatever it is that we call each other. But uh, we interact so beautifully. And I would say, uh, for me, uh, uh, any art form has the same thing as, uh, as sports does, is that we go onto the field, we, we, uh, we, we uh, perform, we uh, sometimes have an audience, sometimes we don't. Um, and we prepare, and we get good at it, and we work hard for it. And uh, so now I'm actually just going to then give it up to somebody who's used or has a huge audience in her life with her music, um, who, who knows what it means to go on stage, but it knows also to create an audience for people and having fun. So thank you, for Lena, for being here. She is part of our team now, and we're really, really proud of that. Thank you, Mike. And I was asked by Mike and Gil Martin to arrive here in New York a week ago to be a part of this amazing project. And first of all, I have to see when you talk about sport, where I come from, music is one that are two of the most universal language, languages we have. And we can achieve so much through that. It binds, combines us all together um, across culture, across religion, and uh, across um, languages, most importantly. And I've been so lucky to travel in every corner of the world and have experienced myself on my body and soul why these 17 goals are a part of um, Global Goals' most important list. And uh, thank you, Mike, for putting me into this amazing opportunity to, m to create a voice um, through music and sport and make it as loud as we can, as, as noisy as we can. That, that was a part of why I was asked to come here, actually, to be a referee, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm good with a microphone. And um, I just want to say thank you for that. I'm going to make as much noise as I can to make it as famous as we can together. Now, Lena, I just think it's beautiful. It was so great to have you. You were amazing. Um, but do you think that artists and you know sports people do do you have an obligation to be part of this global agenda i believe everyone has a part you know must be a part of this because it's in all our interests and we can't just sit back any longer and just watch other doing what they can so it's not up to me it's not up to to most look at stuff this is up to all of us and make it a part of our conscious daily life. Thank you. Now, um, yesterday I was at the, uh, at the Global Compact Private Sector Forum, and there is a lot of talk there going on about you know, disruptive breakthrough innovation as necessary to actually reach these goals within 14 years. It can't just be business as usual. It has to be business unusual. We can't go incremental. We have to really, really go exponential in terms of how we change. And, what I'm kind of curious to know, Miley, is there a similar conversation going on within the UN agencies in terms of how do we engage the public? Does something disruptive have to happen? And you know, could, could this m maybe be one of those ideas? I don't know. Well, we think so. I mean, that was why we were so excited to work with Mike and Iyer on this partnership and uh, to help launch these, the, the World Cup globally. And we're looking forward to going to next year to Kenya and to Rwanda, to Ethiopia, to building support for these kinds of events and these kinds of activities around the world to engage to the widest audiences possible. The, um, the, uh, the soccer match on, on Sunday was the kickoff to an event that many of us at the, across the UN are part of and that ha uh, includes many partners around the world, and it's the Social Good Summit, which opened here in New York to kick off this week of events and, and uh, advocacy opportunities and campaigning called Global Goals Week. And during this week, we are seeing a huge range of innovative approaches to communicating about the goals, advocacy around the world. The Social Good Summit for UNDP is a way to connect our country offices in countries around the world 
to have their own events. And so it's, a, it's I think, really touches on the way that you can engage with people in person uh, through digital communications. This is, a, this is a brand new opportunity to provide ways for people to connect in ways they never were before. Uh, one of the events that we sponsored in 45 countries around the world, a partnership with Amsterdam University, is the Global Goals Jam, which is a way for people to design new approaches to the goals, new solutions, like a kind of uh, global hackathon that had individual events in 45 countries. I think all of those approaches that make people feel like they can be part of the solutions, that they can continue to push their governments and make sure that governments are held accountable for these pro promises that they have made and that the plans continue to move forward so that day to day, the hard work of implementation, of solving these challenges, of moving forward these solutions also is tinged with a sense of joy and a sense of promise. And that's what I think a partnership like this brings and an event like this sponsors. Thank you. Now. We're, we're going to wrap up in a minute and we'll open up for questions if you guys have any. But in the end, I'm just, I'm kind of personally curious, Mons. Now you're wrapping up this year as the, as the PGA of the General Assembly. Are you going to continue advocating for these global goals in whatever you do next? Or is it like good riddance, you know, someone else must take over? No, I was, I, 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 it's the opposite way around. One of the attractions of, of actually being candidate and elected for president of the General Assembly was that it was exactly this year that this, I would say, existential uh, number of goals uh, were presented and approved on. Uh, and, I, and I am quite sure that I'll use most of my, my energy also when I return to to Denmark and to Danish politics exactly on giving priority to this discussion because I think we, we, we are very late. We, we, we have to act, especially in climate, very quickly in order to be able at all uh, to act. And, and that's why it is so essential to find any good idea like this where people, so to say, when they have their daily life when they play, when they do something fun, when they, uh, wherever they are, uh, embody the whole idea of sustainable development. Uh, not to learn a lot about it uh, in long hours, but live it. And, and, and that's what I think will happen here. And that's why the whole, the whole question about politics and sports, I mean, is this politics? Yes, if it's politics, it's the agreed policy of 193 governments of this earth uh, and, and the common purpose. And I don't think there ever was a ban against that mixture of That's policy right. and, and sport. Maiden, wrapping up. So this is, this is a really, this is a true goal 17 kind of project. It's all about the partnerships. and. What kind of partners? What, what kind of partners do you have now, apart from UNDP? And what kind of partners would you like to work with in the future as this project sort of goes out into the world and starts growing up? I think I mean we all important in this, but I also do think that it's majorly important that I uh, have um, that I reach or we reach out to uh, all the. Uh, players of the world. I mean, I mean, all the ones who, uh, even if they have never played before or if they have played many, many years before, is uh, getting the women to understand that they belong. They belong in the world of sports. Um, I think that's the, that's, a, that's a key thing that we all feel that we all belong in that field to make this happen. Excellent. Now, does anyone have any questions for the panel? You're welcome. And you all belong. There are no stupid questions. If not, I, I want to add one thing. You said from the outset that this was maybe the first time I saw the, the uh, usefulness of, of, of football. No, it was not. Because uh, the, the uh, underlying idea of this project was also embodied in, in what both my wife and I have, have been joining in at the inter-ethnic uh, football play uh, done in some of the conflict-affected areas in the Balkans, in the Caucasus, in the Middle East, uh, where sport has been one of the tools 
not successfully on all fronts, but one of the tools to, to try to integrate the former warring tribes uh, in the, the, the children of the warring tribes in one football match. That's fantastic. And also one of, one of, the, one of the referees, apart from Nikolai Costa-Valdau, is, uh, is Victor Chen, who is, last year he was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. And to him also, this is, playing sports is, is part of that peace project. And, uh, and so he's also a very engaged ambassador for this project. Now, Mike, do you have something to add? And just to add, I think for all of us, it is major that we have fun in life. You know, for us to actually go out and have fun, it motivates us to do something together. And, and uh, you, you're more open-minded to the potential of uh, looking at uh, good ways to solve things and stuff like that. So yeah, fun part is good. All right, now. I think we are, we're going to finish up. Thank you guys for coming to this and thank you guys for listening. And if you want to you know, grab some of these people and ask them extra questions, you want to do a picture together? We'll do a picture. <laughs>